Amen. Lord to God, I'd like to read to the present brethren and the ones who are watching Church of Houston and Marietta with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'd like to invite those who can to stand up at this moment. I'm going to open the Word of God in the Gospel of John. I'm going to read once again chapter 4. Only four verses. Verses 9, 10, verse 9, 10, and then 25. Verse 9, 10. Gospel of John. According to John. Chapter 4. Phone 9, 9 and 10. And then we're going to jump to 25 and also 26. This is the word of God. Verse 9. Then the woman of Samaria said, You being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And verse 25 says the following. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah he is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Jesus will ask a word may come towards our heart and our necessity. So that tonight, once again, the power of the Lord may be poured out to each one. We glorify your name for the praises that have already delivered us and blessed us. Continue with us throughout the remainder of this service. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The brethren may be seated. My brethren, as the brethren know very well those verses, they are part of the focus of our study this week. We studied, read, and answered uh, questions. Many times, uh, after dissecting this text, we find revelations, we find things that we had not found earlier. And we may even ask, is it possible that there is something else does God have something else, or have we ever already heard what we should have heard? And this was preached last week. And it is interesting that sometimes the preaching and the text can be read and can be spoken in the same way that we have heard in the past. But sometimes just a single word, a revelation that a person is able to reach, God goes and speaks to our hearts. And then we are amazed. And this, my brethren, is because the Word is alive. And the one who speaks is God. And we can already glorify the Lord because the one who is speaking to us tonight is God. We have not come here by chance. We came here because, as the Word states to us, when we are here together, gathered in the name of Jesus, God is present. And with this woman, it was not different. Actually, the difference was that with us, God speak to us through His Word, through His Spirit. And here, the Lord spoke to her mouth to mouth. And see the situation of this woman. This woman was a woman that was margin marginalized because of the choice that she had made. And we see here that we see here that she went to look for water, as we can understand, on a sixth hour, actually at noon, when the sun was hottest. And normally, it was normal for, for the woman to bring, pick up water in the morning or in the evening, so that she wouldn't have to deal with the desertic sun. But she, probably to avoid 
got in contact with other people because probably people spoke about her. There were comments that were made. And, he, and here, she meets the Lord. And what was the Lord doing there? The text says that it was necessary Jesus to go through Samaria. Jesus needed to go through Samaria. But Jesus, he had options. He could have gone to the shore. He could have gone through the Jordan River. Exactly what it, why is that reason? Because the Jews, they did not have communication with the Samaritans. But Jesus went through Samaria. Jesus changed his trajectory because there was a need to go to that place. Why is that? To meet with that woman. And Jesus, he wanted to meet with her to tell her something. You need to know what is the gift of God. And that woman did not understand because she questioned the Lord. What are you doing here? You being Jew and me, a Samaritan, you come to me to ask water for me? Because it was normal. That was the tradition that was what people was, were expecting at that moment. But there in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 says the following, You are saved by grace through faith. It doesn't come from you, but it's a gift of God. And what that woman needed to understand was that the gift of God had been able to reach her life. And what is the gift of God? It's salvation. Jesus changed his trajectory in order to meet with that woman. Jesus changed his trajectory so that one day he would meet us. Because in the moment of trial that speaks about the Son, is a moment in which many times we are alone, like this woman was at that time, because as we speak, they would pick up water in the beginning of the day or at the end. And, but it was at that moment that she could have felt like she was alone and thinking that, well, she, she was a believer. Even though she was a Samaritan, the God that she believed in was the Jews, was the God of the Jews, the same God. But she felt alone. And it was at that moment when Jesus met her. And many times, we who are here, the brethren who are watching us, there was a moment in our lives in which we were alone. There was a moment in our lives where we were located where the try was hardest. But it was in those moments in which Jesus was able to reach us. It was in this moment in which Jesus went towards your need. It was in that moment where you thought that you were alone, that Jesus was revealing himself to you. And my brethren, the gift of God. Jesus says the following, Oh, if you knew the gift of God, and I'll ask the brethren, do you know the gift of God? The Lord has shown tonight in a spiritual revelation that there is a woman that is asking for an answer with regards to a trial that she's been going through. Is the son of mid, uh, of noon. And her plea is the following. Lord, how am I going to overcome this? How am I going to be victorious on this trial? And the Lord is answering, saying, Look, Jesus, he already overcame everything in the cross of Calvary. And he has done every, all of this on behalf of his children. And everything that Jesus did, all the trajectory that he changed, so because Jesus did, need, did not need to go to the world. But there's a moment in which God the Father said, in order for this to take place, you need to go. Your trajectory will have to uh, be changed. And Jesus, instead of questioning, and even according to his own rights to say, oh, no, not me. But because this woman, to many there, there was no solution for her. And many of us, others might say, there is no solution. But even so, Jesus said, here I am. Send me it. And what did Jesus do? He changed his trajectory. 
and Jesus changed his trajectory. And he has done all of this in order to show us what is the gift of God, which is the love of God. And that woman, she didn't understand because in her head, she thought, oh, um, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. It's not going to work out. But Jesus came to show her that, yes, it's going to work. You may have all these things that people say, but I still love you. And she did not understand this until Jesus at the end said, look, I, I am speak to you. Jesus does not need he does not need an explanation. Oh, I am that person. I am. I am he. My brother, maybe not even this woman that is participating on the service, but other people. They may be facing the same need. How am I going to do in order to overcome, to be victorious in this trial? How am I going to be able to reach uh, answer to this need? Lord, her mercy. The sun of noon. Many times I'm feeling alone. But the, the I am He, the one is the one who is beside you and is is speaking to you. My brother and sister, like this, the spiritual gift says, this gift of God, like the spiritual gift is that is saying, the gift of God was when Jesus, after changing his trajectory. He goes to the cross of Calvary. When Jesus goes all the way to the end and says the following, Father, everything is finished. And it is interesting that the first words that Jesus said that are registered in the Bible are when he is still pre-adolescent, 11 years old, and the parents looking for him. And when they find him in the midst of the doctors, he says, I'm taking care of my father's business. And the last words that Jesus says as in life, as a man, he says, it's finished. What is finished? The God, God's, uh, the father's business. And what is the God's business? Is the rescue of man's life. Jesus, all the way to that moment, he could have gone back and not have gone astray from his normal trajectory. But Jesus went all the way to the end for love towards our lives. So that today, not only this woman, not only we who are here, but all the ones who are watching the service may be able to say, I overcame, I am victorious. And this woman that is asking, how am I going to be victorious? My sister, you are very one. The servant does not fight for the victor. The servant fights with the victor beside him. Why? Because the victor has been decreed in the cross of Calvary. And my brethren, the gift of God is this. And I ask us the same question again. Is it possible that we really know the gift of God? Do you know, have you been introduced to this gift of God? If you have not, Jesus was already here waiting for you. He is here tonight. And what he's saying to that woman, he is now saying to us tonight, if you know the gift of God, and the one who is speaking with you, you're not going to offer him to anything because the one who is give is going to give it. It's me. Because when he had this meeting with this woman, she was looking for water with her own effort, thinking that Jacob was the greater than anyone. That's what she said. Can you be greater than Jacob, our father? What she did not understand was Jacob was the same tar the target of the same grace that she was being a target of. And tonight we are being targets of the same grace, of the same love, the same gift of God. And my brethren, to bring this message to a close, you, me, we who are here and the brethren who are watching, the victory has already been decreed. Your trial, your pain, your desperation, your frustration. How many words you can add to this list? All of it 
was brought to the cross of Calvary with the Lord so that all of this could have been demonstrated in, in His love so that we could be victorious. May the Lord bless us with His word. We're going to hear a song. And if you are in a similar situation like this woman, this is a moment for you to speak with the Lord. Lord, I want to win, but you have already won for me. And your trial, has the victory has been decreed for this trial. Amen. Let's praise the name of the Lord. Let's stand down, my brethren. We're going to have a word of glorification to the name of the Lord. Lord, we glorify your name. We praise you, Lord. Because one day the Lord offered us this water, brought us life, and life that would jump to eternal life. Lord, we praise you. Because in the moments, Lord, of trial and tribulation, it was where you reached us. It was where you extended your hands. It was when you changed my path in order to meet us, Lord. Lord, we praise you for this good meeting, for the salvation, for the sustenance that you have given us. 
Lord, in a walk every day. Blessed be your name, Lord, because we are in your house, Lord. For this moment, Lord, in fellowship with you, Lord. We praise you for everything, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Tonight is a special night. Uh, it's like oh, every other no night, but tonight's a very special night. But today, you're going to have the promotions. The children, they, they have learned. Because it has been our way of life. And as they grow up, they are promoted you know, to other classes. So tonight, we have here, Valentina Rocha, she's not in the service, and she will be, there she is. She is being added to the class of children, of the children. She came from Boston, from the city of Framingham, and now she moved here with her parents, Kellen and Williams. They will be with us, congregating, she has now become our responsibility as church to pray for her. And the teachers have a, a very special mission, which is to teach her the, pa the ways of the Lord. It is, it is a responsibility, not something, not, not simply teaching ABC. It is teaching to, o to obey the voice of the Lord. This is very important. So we're going to since she's not here, we're going to pray with her for with the intermediaries. And for the class of the intermediary, we have a... Uh, where we have saw Matthew here. We have also here in the church, Benjamin Ludolf. That's right, Benjamin. You can come here to the front. Very good. You can stay here. You can stay there. Near your father. And you also have... Manu. Only the two, Manu. Stay here, Manu. She, she not, she's not showing up here. Let's see, Manu. Look at Manu. And tomorrow we're going to have the a presentation, the promotion of the adolescents for the group of youth. So we're going to be praying for them. Can you both kneel down? Can Kneel down, Benjamin, Manu, and now to also going to pray for Matthew and Valentina. Pastor Sabado, please. Let's pray for them. Normally, the teach the teachers come here to the front, but since we we are, are in a different world, the teachers they are going to give them a hug afterwards because they are dying to to receive. They're, it's a great joy when they, they are competing amongst themselves. Now Benjamin there. Benjamin wearing a t-shirt from a soccer team. Lord God, we present before you, Valentina, Matthew, Manu, Lord, your servant Benjamin. I want to glorify Lord your holy name, for the preservation of the life, of the health and fellowship, because you have protected and delivered them to this day. We praise you for their family members that have received, Lord, this important responsibility of taking care of those small ones. Glorify, Lord, for your church also that has, Lord, helped in the grow, spiritual growth of our children. Blessed be your name, because to this day you have protected and delivered 
us and your hand has been upon each one of them. We praise you, Lord, for this special moment where your servants, they are growing, Lord, in your presence without going astray, Lord, for from the purpose that you have for their lives. And we pray that in this new phase in their lives, you may be continually present in their midst, giving, guiding them, instructing and teaching. And also the parents and the family members may bless also your church, who is the body of Christ. Bless them so that they may give continue to do your project in their lives. Bless their family members. We pray for your grace and we glorify, Lord, for your holy name, for their growth in your house and your presence. We pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You can stand up. You can go back to your place. And afterwards, you will already be in the class, appropriate class, class of the intermediary. In my brethren, it is it's a pleasure for us. It is a source of pride for seeing our children growing on the ways of the Lord, getting prepared. But because we cannot have our children in a, in a bubble, in a dome, we have to teach them to face the world. They need to be prepared in order to be victorious in the world. And they will do this in prayer, in obedience to the Lord, in choosing the better person which is to be beside the, of the Lord. Amen. In the church, the teachers here, they have received all the revelation from the part of the Lord, all the material, not only from the presbytery, but they themselves, they, they dedicate, they pray, they fast for our children, and this for us is very gratifying to know that they are being cared for in every aspect. Uh, but the parents need to take care of it, and even to help the follow-up that is, is done at home. Amen? Let's pray, bring this after a close, and tomorrow we'll be here once again, 7.30. And we have three or four adolescents. They are going to be uh, going to the class of the youth. Lord God, we once again want to glorify your name. Because truly, it's good to be in your presence. It's good to have a God like you that takes care and has zeal and loves loves our lives. Lord, receive our adoration, our praise to your name, and give us a night of rest, and continue, Lord, speaking to our hearts, and that your word and your teaching may be kept in our, in our hearts, Lord, and that we may be able to meditate on your word and apply it in our lives. It's a prayer that we say, I'm really thankful, in the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. I would like to wish everyone the peace of the Lord, the brethren who are at home following us through Zoom the deacons, ushers, they are there, can begin the assistance. And we're going to turn off here so we can give assistance to the church and to all the peace of the Lord. one desires a prayer we are at your disposal to pray for someone that may need.